right, so I'm Melissa here with MindYourMind.ca. This is Evan from Stars. Hello there. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, we're going to go through a quick interview um, before your show. So number one, can you tell us about the inspiration behind your band name, Stars? Sure. Um, stars. Uh, you know, is it a, is it mean celebrity? Does it mean um, you know the heavens? Does it mean imagination? So it's the juxtap it's the it's the juxtaposition between you know the cult of celebrity and you know maybe a spiritual kind of higher thing. Thanks. I think it fits five. There's five points in the star, right? Five of you in the band. Yeah. It's all it's all getting together. So um, music means so many different things to different people. It's used to amp you up, to calm you down, soothe people. What does music mean for you? Uh, well, I, I have a very interesting relationship with music because I I turn something that I truly love to do into my um, into my job and into my lifestyle. So it, it it's it's. Um, Music's been great for me. I committed at a very young age and to becoming a musician, and I've worked really hard, and it's worked out great. I also have a interesting relationship with music because the more I play live and record and and work, the less music I listen to at home, which is kind of interesting. And I find that with a lot of musicians, their relationship with music changes as they um, evolve more as a performer. Thank you. I noticed on your MySpace page that you guys do a lot of touring. So um, while you're away from home, how do you cope being with each other all the time or being away from your family all the time? Um, I, I tend to try to immerse myself in the moment. So depending if it's like Singapore, Detroit, uh, Amsterdam, I try to um, really kind of immerse myself in the culture by, you know, going to restaurants, uh, hanging out with locals, um, you know, going to a museum or something and just trying to get the most out of the city and um, out, of, out of the culture I'm in. And I find that's a great way to kind of not only see the world through music, but to really get to know, you know, a culture because we, um, as, you know, traveling musicians, it's, you travel professionally almost first and the music kind of, kind of, comes afterward in a weird way. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So uh, in the song, Take Me to the Riot, obviously that's part of the lyrics. If um, I were to find you at a riot, what kind of riot would it be? Um, I, w I would riot to uh, give away free instruments. Because, you know, when I was a kid, I was handed a trombone when I was uh, 13, 14. And I still play this trombone and it's, it's gotten me uh, around the world. I mean, uh, it's kind of funny how an instrument kind of chooses you. So I would rally against, um, you know, giving away free musical instruments. That's a, good, that's a great idea. Uh, so many of the youth that we work with at MindYourMind.ca are either going through some really tough times um, with depression, anxiety, substance abuse, or, you know, are, are watching someone else go through such things. So in uh, your song, Your Ex-Lover is Dead, you use the lyrics, live through this and you won't look back. Um, it's such an important message, I think, for youth, for really everybody. And I was just wondering if you could elaborate a little bit about what it means in the context of the song, as well as for you in your personal life. Well, I think it's important to to try to believe that you can get through uh, your darkest hour. And um, I know that might seem hard at the time, but I think that's what the lyric kind of references, is that um, whether you're going through heartbreak yourself or watching someone else go through heartbreak, you kind of have to um, commit to the moment of your darkest moment. And, and, uh, and hopefully within that, you can be better for it. Thank you. So your album, Set Yourself on Fire, has some personal meaning for me. Um, you know, it, it, came, it came to me during a, a breakup and having the most fantastic eight months of my life from it. Um, so when I listen to your album, it kind of takes me back emotionally to that time. I'm wondering if there's an album for you in, in specific that when you hear just takes you right back to another, another time in your life. That's funny because I was breaking up through someone when I, uh, I was making that record. So I came, we, we <laughs> kind of went through the same thing at the same time. Uh, I tend to always go back to my like classic records, you know. Uh, I own a lot of vinyl so I try to listen to, you know, jazz and old records and I always seem to come back to Neil Young, Costello, um, uh, Miles Davis. I always seem to go back there. So um, I tend to kind of go back back to music I almost grew up listening to as a kid when I feel like I, I want to go to that place. So. 
Thanks. So Mind Your Mind encourages youth to reach out during tough times. If you give one piece of advice to youth, you know, searching for something, what would that be? Um, I would try to somehow find some sort of creative part of yourself that you can nurture. And I would surround yourself with people that inspire you. Uh, I know I, I got to do that as, as a kid. I am. Um, I got to play music at a very early age and I surrounded myself with people who I found so creative and that kind of made me better creatively. And there are still people that I play music with to this day and some of my closest friends. So if, if it's music or cooking or painting, I, I, I would just, you know, really recommend trying to um, surround yourself in that energy and find out what you're good at and just kind of go lead yourself blindly into that. That's great advice, I think. So um, your next album, The Five Ghosts, is coming out at the end of June. And um, I read you're returning to a producer who did Set Yourself on Fire. Um, will the new album have the same feel as the first? And um, what's the story behind the name of the album? Sure, The Five Ghosts is actually uh, after someone dies in a uh, in the Chinese community, it, it you, you mourn the five ghosts of your house. I believe it's something like that. Uh, but this also had uh, played a role into our personal lives and what happened in our family in the last, you know, two and a half years where we've gone through a lot of like interesting personal and heavy times. So that reflects that. And the, and the record is quite melancholy. And uh, Tom McFall, the producer who produced it, uh, we share, he's almost the sixth member of the band and we share a lot of the same aesthetic where we try to make a record from song one to the end of the record and not just piece together songs. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for us that we create an, al uh, an album that sounds like an album from start to finish. I'm looking forward. I, I, this one thing I've noticed with your albums is that you can put it on and listen through. It's not something that I like to pick apart, you know, just grab a couple of songs and, and, um, then get rid of it, I suppose. But That's what's cool about this tour is that we're playing the record that no one's heard yet in its entirety, um, in order. Oh, good. So um, that's kind of the first set of this tour. And then we kind of take a break and come back and do older songs. So it's, it's been a really interesting journey to watch the, fan, the crowd's reaction. And mm -hmm. so it's been really fun. Well, that'll be exciting. Sometimes I like to know an album before I, I get there, but this will be an experience. So I'm going to move into the second part of our interview. It's going to be a little bit of a rapid fire questioning. I'm going to give you a scenario. You're going to give me an album, a song, a band that pops into your mind that you'd be listening to. Let's do it. Okay. So you're going home on a Friday, sh a Friday after work. You've worked all week long. You're tired. It's the weekend and you're so amped. What's on in the car? I'm so amped. What's on in the car? Well, I've had time to think about this. <laughs> so, um... Uh, I'm <laughs> here. I have. I don't have an answer yet. Uh, I'm gonna say. Um, you know. How about like. Uh, uh, I don't know. Some like uh, some funk. How about some cameo, candy by cameo. That's playing really loud. Perfect. And yeah, I love anything cameo. So I'm rocking some kind of '70s future funk with cameo. Ready to go for the weekend. Yeah. 